to officially open up the exhibition, so that's what I'm going to do, but I want to say a few words about it before handing over to the maestro here, to somebody just describing as the chatan, as the groom of this exhibition and of this space, and, but what I really want to say is ask a question, and it's a question that I've been pondering as I've been thinking about this exhibition today, and that question, I've got to check mine too, that, that question it's really an obvious one. Bergner, Jossel Bergner, came out to Australia before the Second World War, I think 1937, 1937. Came out to Australia, and he became one of the pivotal figures in a school of contemporary art here in Australia. The most famous Australian artist from that social realist school, Noel Cunahan, <laughs> and Albert Tucker, and Arthur Boyd, Vasily, Nolan, the greats, and Yossel is counted amongst the greats. The question is why this Polish Ayid, this Polish Jew, was the first in this school of social realism to see what other people couldn't see. Why was he the first to paint Indigenous Australians? Why was he the first to recognise something that all these other artists who hang in the National Gallery were totally blind to. And that's the question. And I don't have a clear answer. I don't have a clear answer, but I'll try. I'll try. And the way I want to answer it is by relating it to the story of Passover of Pesach that we celebrate in another week. And I, in another two weeks. Two weeks. In a week we start preparing the kitchen. In two weeks. The first thing is that Yossel Bergner understood... Okay. People are coming up the stairs. All right. Sorry. I have time to kind of formulate an answer. Four things that I just want to very quickly address. The first one is the core story of Passover is a story about wanderings. Now, it's the Exodus story. It's about wanderings. And that theme is very much part of Yossel Bergner's personal life. It isn't just the grand Jewish story. It's also the story of Bergner. If you look at his biography, he was born, anyone know, in 1920, in what city? Anyone know? Vienna. He was Vienna. born in Vienna, which was one of the cultural capitals of art and music in that period. He then moved to Warsaw, which made him school in art. And from Warsaw, he became friends with, um, with Jossel Bierstein, came to Australia, came to Australia, who was here, and he spent many years here in Australia. His bungalows, his lust for movement, continued after his Australian period. He then went on to Canada, and from there he went to Israel. And in Israel, he also moved a lot. He spent a period of time in Svat, in the holy city of Safed, and he settled in Rehov Bilul in Tel Aviv, and many of us have been privileged to visit him in his own town. But I think one of the formative influences in this story of wandering goes back to the year 1934, when, as you know, Yossel's father... Melech Ravitch, who was the head of the Warsaw Yiddish Writers Union. Imagine those days had a union, not only for Yiddish, but for Yiddish writers. Halavai, I wish. And he set off in 1934 on his own journey. Yossel didn't come with him, but where did he go? He came to Australia. And he came to search out a Jewish homeland in a very prophetic, prescient way before the war about the possibility of Jews establishing a homeland here in Australia. <laughs> and he took with him on this expedition an Aborigine, an Indigenous Australian, and armed with a camera, Melek Ravitch kept a diary of his journey. And at the end of the journey, he came to the conclusion that the Kimberleys were too hot for Jews. <laughs> and he went back, tragically, to Warsaw. But that's clearly... Clearly, one of the influences of Yossel's life. How can it not be? His father's journey to Australia and his father's expedition, which you would have read about and heard about, with 
an Aboriginal person. Yossu then comes to Australia. And here is the second theme that I want to talk about. Not the theme of wandering, but one of the themes of Passover is remember that you were slaves in Egypt. Zachor, remember that you were slaves in Egypt. Do not oppress the other. That's the second line. Memory is linked to empathy. You remember your own experience so you can empathise. It is stunningly literal when you look at these paintings. Think about it. Yossel in 1946 does that magnificent painting that forms the body of what we are talking about today and hangs, I think, in the National Gallery in Canberra. Of where? In Victoria. In Victoria. In Victoria. Of the tree with three, indi four, four Indigenous Australians with chains around them in 1946. In 1943, he paints an image of a Jew standing and looking at the Warsaw Ghetto. I was talking to Shaika what year he said, Shaika said 1943. Can't be 100% sure. The month is important. The month is important because April 1943 was the year the Warsaw Ghetto was burnt out. They had no CNN. They had no communications that would have allowed that image to have been transmitted directly to Yossel. Except memory. Think of the layers and layers of empathy. Yossel here in Australia, painting what must have been one of the first vicarious, not direct, images of a Jew looking at the walls of the Warsaw Ghetto, which he never saw with his own eyes. And then three years later, having making that leap of profound empathy and painting the face of one of the indigenous Australians at the tree based on the face of the Jew in Warsaw. It even goes back earlier. Because in the late 30s when he arrived, he describes the turning point for him. He was standing at the Melbourne Town Hall and he saw a man, an Aboriginal with a hat, and he said, it's a Jew with a hat. It's a, it, it's, a, it's a Jew. And he pointed particularly at the eyes. And he said, those eyes carry me inside and back for generations. Now, it's the Passover story. It is a story of layers and layers of empathy and recognising in one's own experience of oppression, of dislocation, the same experience that he encountered here in Australia. The others couldn't see it because the others... Didn't, hadn't internalised in their own generational memory that same story of oppression and the need for liberation. Second, third thing, got Exodus, empathy, and the third one, which is a play on that, is a line that we all say at the Passover table. In each and every generation, we need to see ourselves as if we were there, as if we came out of Egypt. Really, it is asking, it's inviting people to not just sit in the present, but to recognise that where we sit is also in relation to where others have sat, that we are parts of the past, and that we need to make that leap of the imagination through ritual. At the Passover table, we do it primarily through food. And I would suggest that art is a kind of ki'ilu, a kind of as if. That art is a way of reenacting moments in time. That when Bergener puts his brush to the canvas, he is in his own artistic and creative way recreating and bringing us standing here today into that moment, into the eyes, into the canvas, so that we stand before that painting and forever say that we ourselves are those people, the indigenous Australians at the tree in chains. We ourselves are the Jews at the Warsaw Ghetto, no matter what the time is. Now, Shaker is one who wants to erase the ki'ilu, the as if. That's why he calls himself I am art. He wants to erase the boundaries so that the art itself become synonymous and with, with life. And I think that's a major challenge of Shaggers. So the last and final theme that I want to raise is that it also says 
at the Passover meal, the Chol HaMarbe L'Saper HaRegu Meshubach, that you have to take on the stories of the past, but the one who is praised is the one who can expound on it, who can expand on it, who can add to it. And what we see here is Shaika and Yossel himself expounding on the original story. Now we have the tree. There are no people at the tree, but the chains are still there. It's a midrash. It's an extrapolation of the past. It's the praiseworthy thing to do. There's an image here where Shaita again does a marbed. You expand on the story. The artist in front of his picture looking at it, drawn into the different moments that are brought together. And I think that is one of the elements of all art and the way it refers to each other, but also that Shaika becomes part of the story. So we have Yossel in Tel Aviv, we have the people, original people around the tree, we have the man in the Warsaw Ghetto, all of these moments in time, and they're all timeless. And we as well, standing here look at the, looking at these pictures, so that the layers and layers become part of us, and that we continue through these very profound images to tell the stories that we've been challenged by and in the past. So a painting isn't just a painting. And that is why this notion of I am art is important. Paintings, this sounds like a slogan, but paintings are us. It's true. <laughs> because they're our stories. They're our stories. It's who we are. And so I want to thank everyone. I want to thank Yossel for really, I mean, I'm a great fan of Yossel's art. And again, I could go on about Yossel and the way he also uses masks, uh, masks to hide people, birds' masks, and and the props, he uses the props of ritual and makes them like the wandering Jews through time. And all of these are the levels of empathy that we talked about, but I particularly want to thank here Shaika and his gallery, because Shaika is the one that not only brings it together, but paints it so that we look at something that was original, that still stands in its originality, but has a whole different meaning that to this very day, with all the controversies that we see now in the media, about Australia and its treatment of its original population um, and, and what, what, what that means today. So thank you and I now officially declare this exhibition open. Yeah.